Hey everybody, Pastor Mike here. I probably look a little bit better than I did in the other the video from uh, Thursday night. Um, I lost most of my voice because when I got to the ER Thursday night, they uh, of course they had me in a cervical collar. You saw that on the video. It wouldn't let me get up and. They were planning on running scans, CT scans, and just checking me out from head to toe. And uh, I, I, the lady hit me from behind pretty hard. And she, she hit me. She, I never heard her stop, never heard her slow down. Uh, she hit me straight on. I was at a stoplight. Uh, the police said she was doing probably 35, 40 miles an hour. And then she shoved my van into the pickup truck in front of me. So wham, wham is sort of how that happened. I had my seatbelt on. And uh, so the uh, ambulance came and uh, pulled a stretch over to the van and pulled me in it. They took my coats off. I've, I'm wearing this now. They took it off, and so I'm freezing to death in the ambulance. And... Um, on the way over, I, I felt a little, just like a little sharpness right about where my heart is. I had told the ambulance attendant, and um, he, uh, he said he noticed something on the monitor that my heart had done something a little funny. So, and it's, you know, as far as I know, my heart is, is fine. They, they still have me on the little, little monitor there. So... But anyway, got me to the ER and um, st strapped down to this very, very uncomfortable backboard. So I'm in a lot of pain from the accident, a lot of pain from laying there. And um, my, my leg, my lower legs have been cramping a lot lately. And usually, you know how you, you get a Charlie horse in your leg. And you stand up, walk it out, and that's fine. Well, I don't have the ability to walk around, to walk it out. So one of them locked up the, from the, the, the cramp in my right calf, just locked up tight. That causes a lot of pain. And so I'm, you know, trying to, I'm, I think, I don't remember who it was, my mom or my, well, it wasn't Lisa, I don't think. But somebody might have been Lisa, trying to push my foot like I'm like I'm standing up to try to get it to unlock. So they gave me a big dose of morphine, that calmed it down a little bit. But then um, I could tell that both legs were on the verge again. And about 30 minutes later, something like that, um, both of them went into an extreme. It's like like a, a nuclear Charlie horse is what it's like. Both of them went into an extreme muscle spasm, not a twitching. I mean, they locked up and you know how the, you know they ask you, oh, on a scale of one to 10, how's your pain? And I'd always go, I hate that test because I don't, you know, okay, maybe a four or five, eight, I don't know. I know what a 10 is now. I know what a 10 pain feels like. And this went on and on and on. I was screaming to the top of my lungs, help me, help me, please do something, please. The thought that I had yesterday, I was thinking about all this. I remember the story of the rich man who begged Father Abraham to dip his finger in water and cool his tongue. And the word he said was, for I am in torment in this flame. And I can tell you, having experienced, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight minutes of extreme pain, torment, um, screaming so loud. I mean, it literally, it just blew my voice out. Um, I can tell you, I do not want to go to hell. No way, no how do I want that. I want nothing to do with it. So anyway, that's what happened to my voice. And 
the poor nurses. Melissa said, you know, the ER was kind of busy, so no one's paying attention to Mike Hoggard. Until the screaming started. Now all of a sudden I've got 15 doctors and nurses and teams of specialists being airlifted in on my account. And um, finally they gave me a very large dose of morphine and then, and that didn't stop it. Both of them were spasming. They finally gave me a very large dose of Valium. And within a minute they both settled down. Whew. So anyway, that's why I lost my voice. Um, I think that probably has something to do with uh, the overall issue of why I'm still in the hospital um, is that they, um, I, since I had mentioned to them that I had had some chest pain, um, so they immediately they hook a monitor up to you and they start doing blood, they start doing blood enzyme levels because when you have a heart attack or you damage your heart or the concern from the doctors was that because of the, the accident, the collision uh, that was made, uh, the fact that I had my seatbelt on, um, that you know my, my heart might have been bruised. But they said the enzyme levels um, went up yesterday, and they're thinking that has a lot to do with the, the muscle damage, uh, not just in my calves, but all, let's see if I can do it, all around through here. My neck is very, very sore today. Um, even, even under here, probably because I went like that, you know, very, very harshly. So they're going to keep me here another day. And I've got my IV pump there and the nurses here. Uh, have all taken very, very good care of me, and the folks from the church um, have just been, they've just outpoured a lot of love and uh, buying me stuff, and my, uh, my sister brought me, and I can't really have a lot of it, she brought me Chocolate covered bacon. And that's about all I can have. For those of you who live in a foreign country and you've heard of American decadence, chocolate covered bacon. That's what it is. So, anyway, sweetie pie, bless her heart. She hates going home without her husband. I hate her going home without me. Um, um, there's an item late in the ER going, uh, can, can we get out of here? I, I got, I got preaching to do Sunday. So Brady's going to take good care of our church Sunday, which let me see if I can do this. Our church is right over the top of that building. You see a, like a red stripe. That is, I think I can zoom in, hang on here. Right over there, that White House there is right next to the church parsonage where Alicia lives, and our church is right there. So, what I'm gonna do is sit here Sunday morning like this, and I can see who's pulling into the church. So I'll know who's there. But Brady's going to take good care of everybody tomorrow, and I'm very thankful and very glad. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take the rest that God told me to take. Everything happens for a reason. And uh, thank God that it's not worse than it is. And, you know, I'll, I'll get over everything and... And everything will be everything will be fine, and be ready to go make the devil angry again, because that's what we do: we love God's people and make the devil angry. All right, I I cannot say enough how much I appreciate everybody's prayers. 
the love that you've sent my way, the number of messages and and notifications and emails. If <laughs> I was just saying Tuesday and Thursday, I just can't get to all the emails. I really can't get to all the emails. I can't get to all the messages. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart and for your prayers and your love. Pray for Sweetie Pie and pray for... Hey, Caleb, come here. Caleb's in here with me. Are you hurt? No. No? You going to wear your seatbelt? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, you can go back. And Wayne from our church brought me Starbucks yesterday, and I didn't drink it yesterday, so I had a full cup sitting on the windowsill, and one of the nurses came in in the middle of the night, dumped it out. So Gary went and got me a new cup. Anyway, uh, God's blessed me. That's what God does. He'll bless you. I'm nobody special when it comes to, oh, God surely will bless Mike. No, uh -uh. this is what he does for his people. And all of you out there who've had something happen in your life, you know this to be true. So tell God thank you for everything he's done for you because that's what I'm doing and what he's done for me. All right? We'll be back in the chair, back behind the camera and the microphone, back in front of our church uh, when God says so. I love you. I thank God for you. And uh, thank you always for your prayers.